Hello and welcome to the shop. A few weeks ago I did a video where I put bottle caps onto pin tubes and my plan was to take those down to Lynn Lacey's shop in Arlington, Texas and we were going to cast them and make some blanks. When I got to Lynn's shop, right off the bat we noticed there was an issue with the tubes that I had made. I had put the bottle caps a little too close to the ends of the tube and if you've ever turned a Wall Street pin, you know that the bushing, there's a very small lip on that bushing. Not a lot of material remains on the tube. What that meant was, if we had cast them and then turned them, we probably would have broke through the resin and hit the bottle caps, which would have really messed up the blanks. We decided to go ahead and make new blanks. So while I was in Lynn's shop, I went ahead and made two additional blanks. This is one of them. Lynn cast the blank. Now, we had a few issues with casting. We used a product called Liquid Diamonds. It was Lynn's first time using it, and of course, my first time casting. So there were a lot of, of, of small concerns. One of which is you'll notice some bubbles above and below the bottle cap. Now, I'm not saying that was Liquid Diamonds' fault. The bottle cap probably didn't touch the tube all the way, and when we put it in the pressure pot, that probably forced any air that might have been under the cap out, and that's probably what caused the bubbles. The liquid diamonds was already kind of gelling at this point, and I think it was just too thick for those bubbles to work their way to the surface. The blank was in the pressure pot, so neither of us could see that happening. One other issue we had was the type of molds that Lynn had were the old blue silicone-based molds. And in the pressure pot, they sort of squeezed. And you could take a look at the rest of the blank and see it's pretty rough looking on the ends as well. These tubes took over 24 hours for the resin to harden. Liquid diamonds takes a long time to harden. So I went ahead and came back to uh, Indiana and Lynn let these set in the shop and finish up, uh, finish up hardening. And then he mailed this to me. I just literally opened the envelope that this blank was in maybe 20 minutes ago. This blank has a lot of issues. <laughs> it's it's going to be tough to turn because of, of the bubbles and whatnot, but one thing I like is a good challenge. So while we are, I currently have two new tubes that I'm in, I've just finished painting. I need to cut the caps and mount the caps to them. We're going to give this a third try. And I think with what we've learned from the first two tries, we're going to be able to get a couple of nice looking blanks. But I can't let this blank go to waste. One of the things I like is a good challenge, so I'm going to prep this blank, I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to see if I can't make it look halfway decent. If you take a close look at this blank, you'll see that there were quite a few air bubbles around the top, as well as the bottom. And when I sanded it down, they filled up with dust from the uh, resin. I went ahead and took my compressor and blew all the dust out and what I'm going to attempt to do is fill these with a little thin CA glue. I'm just going to go ahead and put it around here. I may get some inside the tube but that's okay if I do I'll, I'll take that out with a file. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to let that dry naturally. No activator on this because I don't, I don't want it to dry too fast and turn white. I'm kind of hoping that it'll soak down into the little divots and uh, seal them up enough to where I can, uh, I, I, I can be able to turn this. We'll come back when this side is good and dry, flip it over, and we'll do the other side. I've got my blank chucked up. Now after I put the CA glue on the end of the blank, I let it dry overnight. And then I came back and sanded it off on my sander with my little jig. Uh, and then I put glue on the other end and filled the holes there. They don't look perfect, but many of them are so far away from the blank and there's such a small amount uh, of material that's left next to the bushing that I think they're going to turn off. Uh, I went ahead and took the hard corners and just sort of rounded them over a little bit on the sander. And I'm ready now to begin turning. So we're just going to take our time, turn really slow, and see what this blank turns into.
the blank is shaping up rather nicely. I decided to stop just shy of rounding it over uh, simply because I've got a few uh, little pock marks that I want to go ahead and fill in uh, and then I can come back and clean the blank up with a few finishing cuts. I'm still proud of the bushing. So let me get my CA glue and uh, we'll see what we can do with this blank. I took this blank in the other room and I blew it off with the compressor. And what I'm doing now is just cleaning out anything I can from these pock marks uh, so that I can get a nice fill on them. See, it's got a little piece of white in there, which I don't know what that is. It could be CA or resin or anything. And I just want to try to clean it out so that that doesn't become a permanent part of my blank. now we're going to do a little filling and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little medium CA I'm just going to lay it in there and I am going to shoot a little activator on it because I really need it to uh, dry a little quicker than than usual because I want to be able to get back to turning We've got to be real careful here because I don't want to glue it to my bushings. I don't care that there's a little, ooh, a little bubble on there because I can turn that off. Let me hit that real quick. I got more more than I wanted on there. Make sure we didn't glue that to the bushing and no I didn't, thank goodness. Just trying to fill anything I can see. Okay, we still haven't stuck it to the bushings which is, is a positive. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to let it, I'm going to hit it again with a little bit of activator. Okay, I'm going to walk away, let this sit for a bit, and let it dry because the area under the surface, that's one of the reasons why I don't like to use activator when I do this, because it gets the surface and then as you turn it, if you don't give it enough time to dry, you get that false sense of it's ready to go. What will happen is you'll peel the surface off and the glue is still liquidy and it will literally splatter out all over you. So we're going to let it sit for a few minutes and just uh, make sure everything gets solid. We'll come back and clean this up. I decided to go ahead and stop, even though I have a tiny bit of a flat spot there. I'm going to hopefully take that out with the micro mesh. If not, we'll spin the tool one more time. It's looking fairly decent overall. Um, I just want to see what it looks like after micro mesh. We may come back and if this doesn't clean up, put a little dot of glue there, a dot there, and there. Those are the three spots and uh, see if we can't clean those up a little bit. But Let's get the micro mesh. Let's go real heavy with the uh, yellow and see what we can do. I've got her all the way down on the slowest possible speed. And now I'm just going to work my micro mesh like I normally do and see what I can come up with. Got a lot of slurry that time off the micro mesh. Just feeling it with my thumb there. It's feeling like it's it's starting to round over pretty good. Let's take a quick peek at it. 
That flat spot is definitely sanding out. Still got some heavy scratches in there. Let's just sand through the grits and see what happens. run through that gray pad again just try to take out any micro scratches so far I'm liking what I see got a few tiny little spots down there it actually kind of looks like bubbles you know bubbles in a uh, in a soda drink um, I think boy the back of it looks really good it's the one spot right here the one spot right here and really other than that the blank looks pretty darn good uh, I may see if I can clean this out let me let me get my little uh, um, file and see if I can clean the white that is the slurry from the micro mesh out of that little divot That's the one bubble that came up from underneath of the uh, label. You know, I think the white may not be the slurry. That could be just me digging away at the CA. Let me try putting a dot of CA on there and see what I can do. Let me get a little bit of water here. I don't know. Let's see what happens with a dot of CA. If it's CA dust, it will literally disappear. Okay, and it actually is starting to kind of disappear. Now there's an air bubble in there. Get the air bubble out. Yeah, it's gonna disappear. So it turned out that that was just the CA okay a little bit of activator spritz it on there let that dry jump over to this side here let's loosen up the tailstock so that I can get this away from the away from the uh, the uh, bushing we don't want to put a lot just enough to that's plenty just enough to cover it little shot activator down at the end here you can see we've got one here try to clean some of the gunk out of it ok 
Okay, a little shot of uh, seal. Let's get it away from the bushing there. We always got to be careful. We don't want to glue these to our bushings because then we got a real problem. And I'm trying to do it where I just get the littlest amount as possible to come out of the glue bottle. We don't want to overdo it. And really, yeah, shucks, now I see one on this side. The more I look, the more I find. Got to stop looking. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. I'm gonna let her sit and dry, and then we're gonna come back and we're going to micro mesh this blank uh, again quite heavily in hopes that we can use the micro mesh to, um, well, you know, truthfully, I don't know that the micro mesh will take that CA off. I may come back and run my tool down through here just one time, a nice thin cut just to clean that up, and then go after it with the micro mesh. I think that's the game plan. But we're gonna let her sit and dry for a little bit. I'm ready to start cleaning this up and I just want to come through and take one super careful, super light finishing cut just to knock the heavy off and then we're going after the micro mesh pads. I don't feel any bumps so I know I've knocked the CA down. Let's take a look at it and see how it looks. Looks pretty good down here at the bottom it really filled out nicely looks good up here if you look closely you can see it but actually it's not that bad I'm gonna go ahead and polish this up and see what uh, what we get I won't need to work it quite as thoroughly as I did last time because it's already been pretty well polished up with the pads I'm just trying to work the areas uh, where any glue might be left, any residue, to make sure that that doesn't show in the final blank. It feels absolutely amazing. I don't feel any bumps whatsoever. So to me, that's a good sign. Now as we take a look at it, it looks really good along the bottom. That's the only spot right there and it's really not that noticeable. I'll be honest with you, there are some smaller bubbles inside of there, but I painted this, this kind of uh, brownish gold color because it reminded me of root beer. So we can kind of say those are maybe root beer bubbles. So they actually look pretty good. I say what we do is we get out the buffing wheel, we buff this up uh, to a nice shine and see how it looks. Considering how rough this blank was when we started, I think it turned out pretty darn decent. There are still a few bubbles in the resin there below the surface, but this is a root beer blank. And what does root beer have in it? Lots and lots of bubbles. So I think they kind of add to the overall look of the blank. I'm fairly happy with it. I'm going to be assembling it into a Manhattan kit. And I just got this pin press. It's a Miles Craft pin press. I purchased it from Tim Babb at the Woodworking Maniac store. All I'm doing right now is lining up my clip so that it's in the center of the cap at the back of the pin. This is a flip press, so you can just flip up or flip down any of the little blocks to get the distance that you need for pressing. And it is a spring-loaded press, so that kind of helps a little bit with lining your pin up. Okay, just want to make sure everything looks good. Give it a little tap. I'm Still going to put this piece of cardboard. I promise you guys, I have got some ideas 
for softening up the end of this pin blank. And I'm gonna work on those. Before I get that all the way in there, let me make sure. I'm gonna take this off camera for a second and turn it. There we go. I wanted to try to get that centered perfectly. And as you can tell, I, I'm a little off, but I don't think it'll matter. It's still behind the, uh, the pin. So let's go ahead and get this back in here. But anyway, I've got some ideas to soften this up. I'll be working on that. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got. We bring this up and get a good picture of it. And look at that, we've got a wonderful fit. And considering all the damage that we had on that blank, I think it looks pretty darn sweet. This assembles just like the Manhattan. You take your ink refill, slide your spring onto it, put that into the nib, twist your transmission into place. Let's test the action. Perfect. We'll slide this into the pin. And I am very happy. Take a look at the fit we got there. Just a beautiful fit. See the bubbles? <laughs> that turned out to be a pretty sweet looking pin. I like it. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop. This was a really fun pin to make. I do believe that in the future, when I get started casting, I'm gonna make some more of these. I've got a bunch more bottle caps from many of my favorite sodas, and uh, I don't see any reason why uh, I wouldn't be making some more of these. And now that I've made one and I understand the pitfalls, I think the next one I make and all the ones after that are just gonna get that much better. I want you guys to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Take care, everybody, and have a wonderful evening.